This algorithm whiteboard video needs to start with a bit of a warning because this episode is different than some of the other ones you may have seen. Usually, I present something that works. And that is to say that I'm presenting something that one of my colleagues did or I'm presenting work that's been in a paper. But in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a trick of which I don't know if it works. And if I'm completely honest, I can't know if it works. And the reason is because I'm going to explain a trick that I think might work, but it involves non-English languages, and I might need help in order to confirm if it works. With that out of the way, let's now talk about this problem that some non-English languages face. What you're looking at here is a part of the Raza forum where a user is asking a question. In particular, the user started by saying that they are interested in a phonetic featureizer where the idea is that you could give a featureizer some text and then get out some sort of a phonetic representation of what the text sounds like when you pronounce it. Now, going from text to a phonetic representation is an unsolved problem. But then the user explained that they were mainly interested in the Greek language. And there was a specific part of the problem that they were interested in solving. At some point, the user said, believe it or not, there is a new language in Greek called Greeklish. And that means people write in Greek, but in English characters because they're too bored to switch keyboards. And there's a comment that this is something that mainly happens with young people. So somebody might be interested in writing this, which is, you know, a word written in the Greek alphabet, but because they don't want to switch keyboards on their mobile phone, they might write this instead. And this is interesting for a couple of reasons, but one main observation is we are dealing with two different alphabets and they are being mixed. And this has all sorts of interesting problems when you consider natural language processing tools, because if you have pre-trained word embeddings, for example, they will be able to detect this, but they won't be able to detect this. And this can be a pretty big problem, which is why the user was asking about the possibility of using a phonetic featureizer. I started thinking about the problem a bit, and I came to the conclusion that there might be another way of solving this problem. Maybe the issue isn't the lack of a featureizer. Maybe what we got to do is an augmentation trick. Maybe we have to do something such that the system that is learning from this data treats both of these tokens as equal. So let's talk about that. Let's assume that we have a training data set that indeed does have words like this one in the Greek alphabet. Then the problem is that we also would like to have maybe words like this in our training data. The idea is that if the users of our assistant are using a Latin alphabet as well as a Greek one, well, then it sounds to me like that's a data issue. We just have to start collecting more relevant examples, and that would mean going beyond just these Greek tokens. One thing that you could do is you could just start collecting more relevant training data, and that's definitely something you should do, but you could wonder, well, is there something that we can do up front that might help us be robust against this phenomenon? And if you ponder a bit, you might recognize that Greek and Latin have this interesting relationship. Are you also noticing that both words have an equal amount of characters? You might also notice that whenever the Latin word here has the letter E, that the Greek letter for that seems to be epsilon. Now, we should admit that it's not a perfect one-to-one -one matching because here I've got an S hitting a sigma and here we can see that it's mapping to a different character. But it does make you think, maybe what we gotta do, given that we have a Greek data set, is we have to figure out if we're able to perhaps augment that data to also generate a Latin representation, and then we can train on both datasets. The process of doing this is sometimes also referred to as transliteration. And transliteration in general is a very hard problem, but for some languages, it is relatively easy. And it turns out that going from Greek to Latin and back is one of these somewhat easy cases. And that's mainly because the characters tend to have not a perfect, but a somewhat perfect mapping from one another. There are also lots of languages for which this is much harder. 
This very same phenomenon also occurs in Hindi. Hindi also has a different alphabet than Latin, but also in Hindi, when people are talking online, there is this Hinglish being spoken. If you want to apply the same trick here, you would have to go from Hindi to Latin and have a transliteration process to exchange between the two, but that's going to be much harder for all sorts of linguistic reasons. So what I'm about to suggest is a trick that might work for some languages, but certainly not all. Having said that, the next question is, does this work? I can come up with arguments why there's merit to this idea, but I don't speak Greek. So if I want to figure out if this works, a better tactic would be to make it easy for people to try this out and then to listen for feedback. And that's exactly what I did. I did a little bit of searching and I found this project in Python called Transliterate. And looking at the description, it offers transliteration in Python in two directions. And according to the description, there is support for a couple of languages. Greek definitely is one of them, but there's also Armenian. And there's also some other languages, although they are listed as beta or alpha supported. But at least for some languages, I figured this project might be what I need as a backend to do my transliteration. If you go to GitHub and you go to the typo repository, which is a repository that I made with some augmentation tricks for Raza, you will find, if you scroll down, the typo translit command. The idea is that we're going to take nlu.yaml files that might have data in one alphabet and that we are going to transliterate that into another alphabet. And note that the command line app is able to do this in both directions. So just to give a really quick demo of this approach, I have a file here called greek.yaml that contains some Greek examples that I want to use in my virtual assistant. Then the typo command line app has a transliteration module. And inside of that, there's an augment command that can change one file into another one. I'm saying that the source language is Greek. I'm telling it that the target language is Latin. And I'm telling it to generate this latin.yaml file from this Greek file. And when I run this, it will generate a new file called latin.yaml. And if I open that up, you can see what's been generated. We should immediately acknowledge that this is not a perfect transliteration. You can definitely spot a couple of situations here where the U and the Y are being mixed. So this transliteration process is not perfect. That said, it might be worth a shot. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. It's an experiment that might be able to generate an extra data set for you. And it might help you to be more robust against Greeklish situations. From here, the idea would be to take this file as well as this one to put both in your NLU folder and to train your NLU pipelines on both of these files. Because we have been generating extra data, we should also expect that our training procedures will take more time, but this feels like it's an experiment that might go ahead and work. If you're interested in trying this out, definitely let us know. We are very eager to hear any feedback that you might have. And you can reach out to us on our forum if you want to share your experience using this trick.